Okay, so my name's John Lucas. I'm actually from Rothamsted Research, where I head up the Plant Pathology and Microbiology Department. Um, the reason I'm in Brussels today is we're actually handing over uh, a petition to a member of the European Parliament concerning the what's called the Declaration of Ljubljana, which is to do with the new pesticide registration uh, regulations that are coming through at the moment and being debated by the European Parliament. And uh, maybe you could explain a few things about where you come from and what your particular area of interest is. I work broadly speaking in the area of crop protection where we're concerned with preventing damage to our crops from pests, diseases and weeds and I'm actually a plant pathologist myself so my main area of interest is actually fungal pathogens and particularly of cereal crops. Well my department works right across all the different technologies that we bring to crop protection. Uh, we are of course interested in the long run in breeding resistant crops that don't need agrochemicals to control disease but at the same time we're concerned to develop integrated measures using all the technologies at our disposal including biological agents including chemical agents and of course the the moral of the story here really is to have as diverse approach and an integrated approach to disease and pest control as is possible so in a nutshell you want it to be sustainable this is the holy grail of crop protection to have something which is low input sustainable and not harmful to the environment well, that sounds very a very good objective. And what about this declaration of Ljubljana? Could you tell us a little bit um, what it involved, uh, where it came from, and, and why it's important to you? Well, the background to this is that there's been gradual pressure in recent years to remove increasing numbers of chemicals from the European uh, agricultural market. And this has got to a point now where we think it is in serious danger of compromising our ability to control some pests and diseases. And a, a group of experts uh, at a meeting in Slovenia earlier this year uh, drafted this uh, Declaration of Ljubljana expressing their concern uh, about the new legislation that was likely to make a, a difficult situation worse. And this has now been supported by a, a large group of independent scientists involved in crop protection who are equally concerned about the possible consequences of, of the new legislation. Uh, and where did these scientists come from, this large group? To date I think there's signatories from 14 different countries, including countries outside of the European Union who are concerned about the implications of this type of approach to regulation of crop protection chemicals. Uh, and a very diverse group in terms of the organisations represented. Uh, many of them are from independent research institutes such as my own, university departments, independent crop consultants and of course there are some industry representatives as well. Okay, thank you. And why is it, um, I don't really understand why this is so important to these people. Can you put it into the context of, of, of uh, everyday life? Well, we're, we're practitioners. Uh, our, our work has no value if it doesn't have practical application. And, and if we think a situation is getting to the point where we will no longer be able to effectively control pests and diseases, then it's a matter of concern, irrespective of whether you're involved in the industrial end of the argument or the academic end of the argument. Uh, the analogy, I think, is with clinical medicine, where obviously to control diseases of, of humans and animals we, we use antibiotics and I think everyone will be familiar with the problems of antibiotic resistance that if you use a chemical over a period of time the microbial world unfortunately has the ability to evolve resistance and to counter that resistance we need to have other effective chemistry available so if you reduce your portfolio of available chemistry ultimately you get to a point where you may not be able to manage the evolution of resistance in the microbial community. And that's very much the situation we're facing with some plant pathogens now and certainly with some insect pests. That uh, resistance is already a problem even with our existing portfolio of chemistry and if we make that portfolio narrower than it currently is then the problems of resistance will only increase. That's very interesting. Um, I mean, isn't that something you can solve through innovation, just come up with some new chemicals? This will be an incentive for the companies to develop more active ingredients? Well, of course, every company has its discovery pipeline. The process becomes more and more expensive for companies. The regulations that are placed on registering compounds become ever more restrictive. 
So the pipeline, uh, while we endeavour as best we can to keep it healthy, is becoming smaller uh, with time and the rate at which chemistry is being lost from the marketplace is far outseeding our ability to replace it with new chemistry. And I think that's the concern that ultimately one will reach a point where despite the innovation of uh, science and industry, uh, we may not be able to produce sufficient uh, new compounds to replace or substitute those that are being lost. And I think we're already in that situation, actually. I think the, the rate of removal of, of, of compounds from the market probably exceeds the rate of discovery by about 10 to 1. So putting that into context, uh, roughly how many new active ingredients are we bringing into Europe every year at the moment? Well, it varies from year to year, but I, I, an average at the moment would be around five. Uh, of course, there are more new products, but the products are often based on existing chemistry. And the problem with resistance is that uh, if a pest is resistant to one area of chemistry, it will be resistant to all the products in that area, generally speaking. So it's, it's not good enough just to make another version of the same thing. You've actually got to have something genuinely different with a different target site, different mode of action, if you are going to counter the problem. Mm -hmm.